thanks. Um, I arrived from the opposite of the world, of, um, of the Netherlands, and um, basically that's not the only opposite. If we would look into the Netherlands compared to Australia, Australia is huge. We only have a small country. But in terms of population, it's about the same. But um, if you talk about population density, well, it's a bit more crowded in our country than it is in Australia. And a big part of, of, of the Netherlands um, is actually reclaimed land, reclaimed from the sea by tough labor. And um, well, that reclaimed land, especially the western part, um, is a big basis for our economy. Um, it's a combination of industrial sites, um, uh, agricultural areas, um, and of course cities. And that combination actually attracts a lot of birds. So what you see over here is um, uh, an aerial image of Amsterdam Airport, from which I departed when I um, flew down to Australia. And you see a lot of agricultural land surrounding it. Um, it attracts a lot of birds uh, to, well, the agricultural land around the airport, which, of course, is a big, big risk for aviation. Um, it's a big risk because the birds um, crash the aircraft, they, they hit the engines, and effective bird control is essential in that area. So if we would look into traditional methods, how to cope with this issue, um, we identified that they're usually a bit inefficient over long term, so birds get used to it. Think of the old-fashioned scarecrow down in the field. Or think of sound. Think of these loudspeakers um, or gas cannons. They're, they're a nuisance to the environment, nuisance to the neighbors. And thirdly, we identified that traditional methods are usually animal unfriendly or unfriendly to the environment. They kill birds, um, bad for the reputation of the company, and can be very expensive. So well, as Tom already introduced, we work with lasers, lasers um, to actually solve this issue, solve the issue of um, the conflict between humans and birds. Got a small video which I wanted to show you, which um, uh, actually shows you how the uh, whole technology works. You see a group of geese at the moment, and you see a green dot. And the green dot is where the laser beam hits the ground. It's a stick. It's perceived as a physical danger by the birds, a large stick. And it's the same reflex as a car that drives towards birds. Physical danger approaching them, really entering their comfort zone. And with this technology, we set a new standard because this is totally different than what um, is used before in the traditional methods. You can steer the birds in a certain direction. You can actually do a range of 2,500 meters and you can repel different bird species. So well, just briefly go back to an airport, to Amsterdam. Um, Amsterdam taught us a lot. Um, because using a laser at, a la at an airport is quite dangerous, can be a big risk. Um, so we as bird control group had high ambition to go into that market. But people always ask, well, why this ambition? Because there's so many risks. And well, basically, um, uh, the explanation for that is a very nice quote of President Kennedy. Because why would we climb the highest mountain? Why would we go to the moon? Well, we choose these goals, not because they're easy, but actually because they're hard. Because the goal will serve to organize and measure well, all our energies and skills um, to make that ambition happen. So if you go talk about our innovation, it's having the ultimate laser beam for bird control. Um, the ultimate laser beam, by which I mean that it is safe for the eyes of humans and birds. It's not damaging um, uh, any. Um, it's safe. And we do that by a combination of light frequencies, um, high precision optics, and filtering. And that's really the innovation we bring to the industry. So, well, we basically um, uh, am, are able to repel birds in an effective way, but do not bring danger. 
Next to that, we also have another innovative feature on our products, which is called, oh, go back a bit, which is called the Horizon Safety System. And that's a feature which actually measures when the laser beam is going to be dangerous, dangerous um, in terms of distracting pilots or, uh, well, drivers. And it switches off the laser beam if it's needed. So if it's going to shine into the sky or going to shine onto, I would say, vehicles or, well, the living room of the neighbor. In terms of products, well, I brought one. I'm going to show you. This is one of our products. This is called the Aerolite handheld. And this is something airports use, but also farmers use. Uh, and we sell birds. This technology, we also automate it into the horizon. We have an automated robot which does the work for you. I will pass this around so you can handle it. It's not very, very automated in terms of settings. So we as a company became an authority in the aviation market. Uh, we worked together with um, uh, the UK Civil Aviation Authority and with ICAO, which is the International Commercial Aviation Authority. And with that cooperation, um, uh, we gained a lot of clients in the aviation. Um, and with actually that authority, with that knowledge, we took that lessons to the agricultural sector, uh, and that's what I want to tell you a bit more about. Because birds in the air, of course, cause danger, but birds on land have quite some other problems. Um, because birds typically eat about their body weight in food every day. Um, they pick and damage the fruits and vegetables, uh, making them unsellable and birds spread diseases, they spread bacteria, which, well, causes secondary spoilage. Um, you can actually lose up to 50% of your crops uh, to birds, so it's a big issue. Uh, and if we talk about, well, the agricultural sector, we always divide it up in different sub-markets, and I will go through them just one by one, uh, because everyone, every subsector has their own problems. Livestock farming, for example, birds fly in and spread diseases, but they also eat from the food of the cattle. So that's a big issue. In agriculture, if you talk about crop growing, birds eat the crops, damage them, and therefore really reduce the profit for the farmer. In a dairy farmer, and the birds eat the grassland or eat the food from the, uh, uh, from the cattle. In orchards, you have birds flying around, picking on the fruits. Uh, and actually, so they're damaging those individual fruits. But if they're picked um, and thrown into a big pile, I would say, for storage, uh, those fruits start to rot. And they actually make other fruits around them also rot. So that's being a big, big issue if there are fruits rotting inside a shed for storage, for example. Vineyards has the same problem. Grapes are picked by birds, and those grapes cannot be used for wine, for example. And in greenhouses, birds fly in, and they damage the small plants, uh, and of course also eat the vegetables. So across the whole industry, there are different problems, and every sub-industry has their own. So it's passing around. It's like one quarter at the moment. Um, this tool, this AgriLaser handheld, has a range up to 2,500 meters. And as mentioned, the laser beam doesn't pose any danger to your eyes. It's animal friendly, environmental friendly, um, and it gives a long-term effect. So it's something which is very sustainable over time. It's really something that the birds do not get used to um, compared to the traditional methods. Well, next to the handheld device, which is a real tool, we also have a robot. Um, it's called the AgriLaser Autonomic, and 
Uh, this robot is really like a set and forget machine. Um, it's operational 24 seven and on a preventive way, it will make sure birds do not come near your crops. Uh, quite an intelligent machine. Uh, it's set up by software. So with that software, you actually make sure that the laser beam is shining on your crops and not on the motorway or into the sky or at the neighbor's house. Um, it's intelligent in that way. It can be set with different time slots. So for example, you only have problems with birds during daytime or during nighttime, morning time. You can assign that and really uh, uh, match the needs of your situation. Uh, it's a very flexible machine. It's not only flexible in, well, its features, but also in the way it's powered. Uh, because on rural land, AC power supply is not always there. So it's powered by solar panels and batteries, for example. What I'm going to show you now, yeah, there we go, is a movie. Um, uh, in this movie, you actually see how we would set up the device. Um, again, we got some ducks, got some geese. Um, as being the subjects of this movie, but gulls, um, crows, uh, small birds are also affected by, um, by the laser beam. Um, so here, after like physical placement, it's um, hooking it up to a to computer, and the computer is used to configure it to that area. So you move it around um, to match the exact dimensions and make sure it's not shining on the motorway um, you see in the background. After that, it's setting up different time zones. So you might only want to shine it during daytime or during morning time, because that's in, well, your particular situation that you have the problems with. Again, after, well, unplugging, it's really set and forget. It does the job for you. Um, and the birds fly, fly away instantly. Um, if they're there, and it will also prevent birds if they fly over to land, they think twice if the laser beam is shining there. So, um, I also want to share some other markets we're, um, we're active in, because this is very special down in Australia, actually. Um, in the fishing industry, uh, birds are caught as bycatch. Uh, the fishermen got long line fishing, and each year 300,000 birds die, uh, including endangered albatrosses. And in terms of impact, and in terms of, well, the animal friendliness, the highest award we got was from the World Wildlife Fund. The World Wildlife Fund recognized our efforts in the market um, for reducing bycatch. Me personally, I'm very proud of this um, because that actually, um, well, I would say, proves that our technology can be beneficial for nature but can also be beneficial for business. And that's really how we look in, uh, at the situation. We want to have it uh, beneficial for the farmer, for, for, for the guy who wants to make a profit, but we also want to make it uh, 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 not posing danger for nature because we think that it should be a very sustainable way of approaching the conflict between humans and birds. We as a company um, are based in the Netherlands, uh, but we are very international. Uh, we just opened up our office in Boston in the U.S., and next year we also want to open an office in this region, preferably Hong Kong, and I'm down here to actually meet the innovators of the industry. Uh, we're active in more than 70 countries around the world, but we've only just been able to set up trials here in Australia. Uh, two weeks ago, the Nutfield Scholarship from, uh, uh, from Australia came over to our office in the Netherlands, and he's participating in the trials as a mango farmer. So again, I want to meet those industry innovators down here who also feel that they need a sustainable solution for their bird problems. Because we as a company have high ambition, um, we actually aim for market leadership on the bird control market. 
And I strongly believe that that market leadership is not about making the most revenue or making the most profit. I think it's more about moving into the areas where nobody's been before. Being that first mover and taking up real challenges in finding a solutions where, well, the world is waiting for. Thank you.